live from remote locations. This is the Ozone Espresso Shot Baseball Edition. Yesterday was October 1st, folks, and it is my favorite time of the year. Is it your favorite time of the year as well, T? It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the baseball playoffs, folks. And yesterday was game 163. 162 games, four teams, identical records to determine who wins the divisions. And they got it right yesterday. They got down to business. <laughs> they had to get down to business. Baseball got it right, too. I like this wild card situation that's going on. I liked how baseball got it right. I liked how all the games started at the same time on Sunday. Um, now, we went in with exact opposite cards. I went with the Cubs and the Dodgers, partially because I've just been screaming Cubs all year. Milwaukee was definitely the hotter team. You like Milwaukee because of the bullpen situation. Now, what did you see yesterday in the game that makes you feel about this wild card game going forward? Was this wild card game today you're talking about? Or the yeah, one that with, was- with the game going forward. What, what I saw in the game yesterday myself, uh, what I saw was the Cubs missed a very big opportunity. I think it was the sixth inning where they had runners, two runners on and less than uh, two outs, and they didn't score anybody. And in these tight kind of games, you can't do that especially against a team like Milwaukee because Milwaukee has a monster bullpen. I mean, they're literally, if they can get five innings, um, you can almost cancel Christmas. And not only that, Milwaukee has the option to slug it out with you as well. I mean, they have crazy sticks. They have a crazy bullpen. Their weakness is their starting pitching. So if you can get in their bullpen early, then you can beat them. But if you try to beat them late on their bullpen, it's probably not going to happen. It is not going to happen. (laughs) I mean, the robot. (laughs) Yeah, but uh, I, I I don't think I don't think that the Cubs capitalized, and I actually don't put that on Joe Madden. That was on the Cubs players. I don't know what happened. The bats got stymied at the point where they could really have uh, they could have done some damage there in the sixth because they had the meat of the lineup up. I think it was the sixth or the seventh, but they had the meat of the lineup up. Chassin that was throwing surprisingly well. The most impressive thing for me is is that the Brewers in watching this game have uh, the Royals North going. They have the 2015 Royals squad with Lorenzo Kane and Mike Moustakis. They got guys who know how to win. And you mix them in with the young guys, um, you know, like yeah. a Christian Yelich. Yeah, you can't say nothing about Christian Yelich. Big nine. Big nine. And then you have that kid, Arcia, as well at the bottom of the lineup because you get production from the bottom of the lineup. You can get any kind of production from the bottom of the lineup, you're going to be a problem. And they went four for four. I think yeah. that's RC gave you four for four. Santana came in off the bench, wasn't it? Domingo Santana got that big double down the line. Yeah. And and this is what, you know, they what they did was they exposed the Cubs for not having the bullpen. And that's gonna be a serious problem for them potentially even today. Um when we look at, at that game, uh we go we we well, well we'll get to that game in one second. You go to what happened in the in the game after that. The Dodgers played the Rockies, and I had the Dodgers. The Blue Crew was very tough to beat at home at Chavez Ravine, and that kid Walker Bueller showed up. How would you feel about Herman Marquez? I felt great about him. He looked good, but you know what? The Dodgers took out the whooping sticks, man. For some reason, um, Chavez Ravine has turned into a homer dome, and I think they – it's like uh, the Dodgers had were fourth at homers or something like that at home, something crazy that never happened, you know, because – Home runs are far and in between in Los Angeles. And yeah, yeah. Every- yesterday I think it had a lot to do with the uh, with the heat as well, because it was burning mm-hmm. yesterday game yeah, time. It was scorching. Yeah. yeah, and I think that the I think that that played a long ways in getting the ball out of the park. Now, with that, I think um, the Dodgers have this thing that I've been watching them over the past week. They, you know, over the past month of the season, they dropped that series to the Reds. Then they split with the Padres. Like it, they, they didn't, they weren't necessarily playing with the sense of urgency. It was almost like they felt entitled to win the West. And so and they feel like they're playing down. Yeah, because what happened was when Colorado went on that crazy, what was that a nine game winning streak that they just snapped yesterday? Mm-hmm. When they went on that winning streak, the Dodgers matched stride for stride. So when the Dodgers went up to San Francisco and they knew that the division was on the line and possibly even the postseason was on the line, they pulled out the whipping six up in San Francisco. And they, you know, they, they beat the tar out of San Francisco and swept that series. Then yesterday they showed up and started banging the baseball as well. If the Dodgers can play with that sort of intensity and that sort of urgency, they can be a problem. Now, obviously, Kenley Jansen, somebody's got to figure out what's going on with Kenley because 
you can't feel good about what you saw there at the end of the game. He gave up two bombs, Trevor Story and Nolan Arenado. And I also two of the best hitters in two of the best home run hitters in in baseball. Let's, but let's, he's, he's considered in, also an elite closer, and elite closers don't give up home runs at the end of the game. Although he was in there in a non closed situation. But and that's still, where I, this is what I'm clinging on to. This is what I'm hoping for. I mean, he's in a non closed situation, which is never a good idea, ladies and gentlemen. If you just happen to be a major league manager listening to this podcast, keep your closers in closing situations. You see it all the time with the Chapman. You see it all the time with the just, you name the closer, they have a problem if it's not a closed situation. Well, I, I don't give them a pass on this one because this is like a big, big time pressure situation. Whereas at the end of the season, this is the last game with the season on the line. And I would bring in my closer as well. And I usually don't believe in bringing in your closer in non closing situations, but this is for the division. So you have to bring him in in that situation. The only thing that I was saying about him is that he's been like this for about a month now. And Ever so since he had the heart issue. Yeah, so he's suspect now. I think that his cutter is flat, which makes it a flat fans ball. And I think that a lot of people can't feel secure at the end of the game and bringing Kenley in right now. And the Dodgers bullpen is definitely not what it was last year. So the Dodgers are in trouble. I feel like the Braves are going to be able to, to give them a serious issue. Well, it's going to be interesting. I like the Dodgers chances for one, just because of the experience from the playoffs last year. Like I said, the players seem as though they're very confident. And I think David Roberts, Dave Roberts has gotten a lot more experience through that, uh, through that, that playoff run last year, getting within one game of winning the world series. I do believe that um, going in, though, he likes to ride the hot hand, and everybody right now was the hot hand. <laughs> so it's going to be really interesting to see what ends up happening once they get down there and to see how the Braves can uh, – the, the young kids on the Braves can handle the spotlight. Now, we'll get into that preview when we get closer because we're planning on giving you an espresso quite a few times this week, folks, because we want to talk about these games. So let's talk about the game that's going on tonight. That leads us to the wild card game in the National League, which now Colorado has been on a tour. They went from Colorado to L.A., now to Chicago, to face the Cubs. Uh, It's going to be Kyle Freehand starting, Freeland starting, facing John Lester, both of which who have surprisingly similar numbers on the year. you got Freeland who had uh, who went 17-7, 2.85 ERA, which is fantastic in the National League. Um, And sub-3 ERA is tough to come by nowadays. And then you got John Lester, who's the veteran who went 18 and six with a three, three, two ERA. Now, who would you have gone with if you were the coaches in this situation? I would have went with Hamill and I honestly would have stayed with Freeland. And not only that with, with Freeland, he has, he, you have to give him a little bit more respect because he does pitch in Colorado and he's successful in Colorado. So yeah. I would give the upper hand to, to Colorado in this situation. And also the Cubs don't have a bullpen and that's going to come back and bite them again, because if they can put base runners on and get Lester's pitch count up, and getting into the Cubs bullpen, they're going to have a problem because Cubs, the Cubs really can't close out a game. They have a really hard time closing out a game. I, I, you know, you saw them give it to Justin Wilson yesterday. And I remember when Justin Wilson hit the scene, I had him on my fantasy team when he was with Detroit. And he was, I mean, really uh, effective when he was the closer for Detroit. Right. And he got to Chicago and has never been the same. And maybe and maybe they knew something in Detroit. <laughs> I don't know about that because he was really effective in Detroit. He was uh, effective he, in Detroit, but what makes the difference between coming from Detroit and then going to Chicago and not being effective in the National League, which is co- considered weaker as far as hitting wise? I don't understand. This is this is why I bring it up. But you see this consistently. Sometimes a change of scenery really helps a guy, and other times not so much. And yeah. I don't know what happened. You know what happened in this situation, but it went the wrong way for that young man. And now, honestly, I'm riding with the Cubs again. I got to ride it out. I like it at home. I'm not riding to die, but I'm riding with the Cubs on this one. I feel like the Rockies still haven't figured out the formula to get over the hump. Um, they have names in their bullpen, but their bullpen isn't exactly lights out either. Uh, although bullpen, th- they, they have a few pieces in the back end of the bullpen that can act, actually get out. And I don't feel like that with the Cubs because even though you have Wade Davis back there who's suspect sometimes, he can get you three outs. And he gets you three about, outs. And you're talking about going to Pedro Stroke. So I would have to stay with Wade Davis. And I think and, they, I think actually think they're going to slug it out. I think it's going to. I don't think that I'd like to see the weather out there to be honest, but I don't think it's going to be as tight as it was yesterday. Um, but do you think that people can? You think the Cubs can actually slug it out with the Rockies? I mean, the top five of the Rockies lineup, top five to six, are like completely monsters. I, have you not looked at the Cubs lineup? 
The Cubs, <laughs> you have you got your man. He's just cold right now, but you got your man on your fantasy team, Wilson Contreras. But you got Javi oh, Baez he's doing terrible right now. But that's why I said he's not hot right now, but he can hit the baseball. And hitting, as you know, is contagious. If Javi Baez can get going, Javi Baez, yesterday, one thing I just want to talk about the game within the game. Yesterday, something beautiful happened if you're a baseball fan and you watch. And one of the things that happened was early in the game, Christian Yelich got up. And before he got up, Lorenzo Cain hit uh, uh, what should have been a single up the middle. And MVP candidate Javier Baez, who plays every position on the field, went up the middle, ranged, and threw out Lorenzo, which is unbelievable. He was one of the fastest players in baseball. Yeah, and and it was a great play. And then what happened? It because of because baseball is the greatest game ever designed. The MVP, who I think yesterday took home the title, proved himself to be the MVP. Stepped up with a chance in a big situation. What did he do? He got a base knock to get to to, to kick off the scoring. Especially, and, uh, especially against a pitcher who had been dominating him, you know, for the whole season. Yeah, and this is this is one of those games within the game things that I just thought was fantastic. I, I really thought that was beautiful to watch. And so, anyways, back to that the top of the lineup. I mean, the top of the Cubs lineup is no slouch. You got Daniel Murphy, who has been banging the baseball since he got to Chicago, who's basically been banging the baseball for the past three years, three four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got him. You got Rizzo, who clutched up big time um, yesterday with that bomb because Shasin hadn't given up a hit. Um, you got Rizzo, Bryant, Baez, Daniel Murphy. I'm not really mad at that four up top. Yeah, Man. we're talking about Charlie Blackman, DJ LeMayhew, David Dahl, Nolan Arenado, who leads the National League in home runs, Trevor Story, who's one home run behind him from leading the, the league in home runs. And then you got Cargo. I mean, you just throw in pieces. Cargo, there. you know what I have to say? I'm disappointed in Cargo's work. Cargo had a terrible at bat after the Kinley gave up two bombs. Because that was, because that was <laughs> a nine pitcher at bat, and then he scored that first pitch. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You got to take your pictures. You got to, you're trying to get back in the game. Cutter, and he's down by three. Your bomb actually doesn't even mean anything. Get on base, man. I need you on base. That was very, and I've seen this over and over again. Cargo kind of lives off a of prior success because he had some great years in Colorado where he put up some really impressive numbers. But as of right now, I'm not, I don't feel like Cargo is somebody to be feared in the lineup personally. I'd be very yeah. surprised if he did damage to John Lester. I wouldn't because that's the type of player that Cargo is and what he's great he's at. He's a dude. Yeah, and, he, and he's good at forgetting his last at bat, and that's something that you yes. have to be able to do yes. as a baseball player, and I think that he'll be able to do that. And I wouldn't be surprised if a guy like him has a big game, and Ian Desmond as well. But you know what? The, the Rockies are a problem because they have speed. If Freeman can keep them in the game, they'll probably win. If, they, if it's close, I'll take the Rockies over them. But I don't think that either one of those teams are going anywhere. Because they, they have to spend too much right now. They've had to spend a lot in the past the past uh, week. It's been every game has been high stress. Right. And I, I tell you the truth, it doesn't look like fun. Now the Rockies look like they were having fun when they were on their eight game winning streak. They look like they're having a good time. Yesterday, the Rockies didn't look like they were having a good time in the ninety five degree Los Angeles weather. Well, and and, and the ninety nine mile an hour piece of fuzz. <laughs> it was not. They did not have a good time with Walker Bueller. How about this kid, Walker Bueller? Jesus, we just gets the ice water in his veins. He goes up there, carves the Rockies up, and you're talking about that monster lineup, which they do have. Carves these guys up and then gets the RBI. Come yeah. on, man. He's, he's taking a page out of Kershaw's book. And I this see, is I the point. You can, you can see more better than Kershaw. He has thrown better than Kershaw right now. His past few starts, I think he's punched out 10, 12, 10, and 9 or something like that. So yeah. he, he's throwing crazy. Yeah, but no hearing yesterday up until the sixth inning. And this is why I like the Dodgers against the Braves. Because yeah. now the guys, the, the, their their pitching rotation is now set up once again. And uh, if they can just sneak one out there and not have to rely on Rich Hill – then I think that they can be in a position to make some noise. You got, uh, so basically, say things go all the way left. You're talking about Bueller again back at Dodger Stadium on Sunday, uh, in a, in a do or die game. And I like that. I like those odds. I like, I always like Kershaw, even when he ain't pitching great. I always like going out there with Kersh because yeah. even when he's not pitching well, he keeps, he, you, again. He keeps you in the game. And it, you know what you saw? He didn't have his best stuff in San Francisco, a team that he absolutely and totally dominates. He didn't have his best stuff in San Francisco when they needed that win on Saturday. But you know what he did? He kept them in the game, and then he got the two-run single. <laughs> he got the two-run ribeye single. Yeah, he's this guy is a big-time ball player. 
but but he's going to have to be a big time ball player on the bump, and that's where they need the most. Because no, no doubt about it, no doubt about it. One of the biggest problems with the Dodgers when he's on the bump is that they they don't get run support, and you got to get run support. And then another thing is that the Braves bring out that those fearless young kids who are not afraid or intimidated by Clayton Kershaw. You have Acuna, you have Ozzy Albies. I mean, they have a monster. They have a monster squad. The thing that they- I, I, I'll go as far as to say, in my opinion, they're the most underrated team in the playoffs. I agree. I mean, they are a problem. But I honestly, with the way that it's lining up right now, I would have to take more off the Brewers because with the bullpen, because nowadays the game has transitioned to a bullpen game with the bullpen that the way that it is and the way that they swing the stick and they can actually close out games. That's how you get to the big dance. They they even even tightened up their defense because that's why I didn't really have take them serious earlier in the year because they had one of the worst defenses in baseball, but they tightened that up. To me, this is more evidence of them being the Kansas City Royals North is because they're also taking that that nasty boys uh, 1990 red squad kind of format where they get to the back end and they shut it down. They got a guy for the seventh, eighth and ninth and uh, and they can get you done. And honestly, Hader can go eight and nine, as you saw yesterday. You have guys back there who can get the job done. And that's a problem. That's a, that's a, more so than the sticks. That's a problem. But you got to get something out of the front side of the pitching, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting to see. Well, what about this Yankee game coming up? I think that I think that uh, you okay. So you want to you want to knock and jump into it now? Okay, jump into it. We, we, can, get, we can get down on it. Well, you know what? Team, I don't like Severino starting. Personally. Me either. He hasn't shown me that he's ace. Handle the lights. <laughs> But he hasn't shown it, but maybe that's what they're trying to force the issue. Last maybe. year they put him in the wild card game, and he got jumped on. Brian Dozier took him deep straight away. That was right off the bat. And, um, you know, they picked him up because Irvin Santana wasn't ready for prime time. This year, if you get down to these uh, Oakland A's, speaking of bullpens, you get down to the Oakland A's, you got problems. Yeah, they have one of the best, if not the best, bullpen the in best, baseball. Yeah. They, get, mean, they can close it down. The back end of their, their – and the Yankees have a monster bullpen, but the back end of the Oakland A's bullpen is extraordinary. <laughs> you, <laughs> don't wanna, you don't want to play with the back end of that, that Oakland A's bullpen, man. You will – if they get a, a guy that can go five innings and give you a one- or two-run lead, you're more than likely the game is over. Yeah. They don't have front-line pitching. Just like the Yankees, though, the Yankees really don't have front-line pitching, and they rely on slugging it out a lot, and that's what's going to come back to bite them. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's going to be interesting because you got Judge now. I think one thing that Aaron Boone should get credit for is that he tried to get Judge as many at bats as he could when he came back from that wrist injury. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so you know, I felt like they made a good statement when they played the Red Sox this past weekend. Um, I, I really don't know about this game because the Yankees are very very tough, like yeah, very tough at home. It's hard yeah. to beat the Yankees at home. Well, they, the Yankees, the, 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 the they they know how to take advantage of the short porch as well. I mean, they know how to take advantage of the whole field. That whole yeah. that whole field, they really have a home field advantage. But the A's are scrappy, and uh, and Chris Davis can hit the ball out of Yosemite. He doesn't care where you play. But this so, is the problem, though, because I think that the Yankees going with Serino, you'll be able to tell in the first two innings if it's real or not. Because if he doesn't get the job done in the first two innings, you can probably write the Yankees out of it because. The Oakland A's, if they jump out on you, they have a bunch of, they have a lot of confidence. All those young guys over there have confidence, and they can get the lead on Severino. I don't think that the Yankees will be able to come back after the fifth or sixth inning. It's going to be very interesting to see because the winner of this game is uh, has to go face the Boston Red Sox, and this could be another chapter in the story rivalry exactly. between the Red Sox and uh, the New York Yankees. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, I definitely don't believe that the Oakland A's can be the, the no. No, I think they might get swept. Yeah. It's in five. It's five. not in seven. Five, I don't think they beat them in seven either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I definitely don't think they beat them. They got a better chance of beating them in five than seven. Yeah. Uh, and at news and notes, it looks like Paul Molitor is out, which sucks because he had them what looked like ahead of schedule last season, and then they completely fell apart this season. Yeah, but that's not his fault. I mean, you got to give him some talent to work with. He's I don't know. He, he had talent. These guys, they, a lot of these guys, they just didn't seem like they were serious about their game. We and know how about the series. And I the coach got to get you prepared. Yeah, well, Brian Buxton, I can't get him mentally prepared if he, you know. Miguel Sano. Yeah, Miguel Sano. All of these undisciplined hitters that Paul Molitor, we know, can always hit. 
and he just maybe he has a communication problem. But overall, I can't. You have to give. I feel like you have to give a guy like Paul Molitor at least three to four years to get that act together. Over there. I think it's very. There's a premature move. Maybe he didn't want to do it anymore, and yeah, the organization so. is is just wearing it. You know. Yeah, maybe so. But on because, another note, Mike Sosha is gone, which is which is great. <laughs> Shoot. After 19 wow. years. After 19 <laughs> well, years. I don't know about to say it's great. I don't ever like to see a guy lose his job, but I think that the, the organization is definitely time for the organization to move on. Well, and lose a job, he stepped down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm just not in the. <laughs> I'm not in the practice of praising the, that uh, the failure. So it's. A, it, I think that uh, you he got the failure. You got in the ring. He got a championship. I just the you know not getting to the playoffs the last few years with all the talent. One, I don't know if there's anything much he can do about the injuries to the front line pitching, uh, other than Otani. But, uh, you know, Garrett Richards never, never got it back together. Tyler Skaggs could never get in. Andrew Haney. You have all these guys who just never really got themselves together, you know? And right. they, they get hurt and it is, it is what it is. Um, and now he's out. A lot of things going on in baseball now and coming up. I'm very interested to see what this week is going to hold because it's going to tell us a lot because we got the, the defending champion Houston Astros. We're going to get to watch play and pitch and hit the Red Sox, the best team in baseball this year. We got them. It's going down. It's going down. You got anything else to add? No, that's just me for right now, but I shall return. There you go. And uh, next time we talk with you guys on the big show, folks, we'll talk about LeBron James and how he looked in the purple and gold. Ah, well, I'm going to leave you with a quote from John Wooden, ladies and gentlemen. And it is uh, very, very important. And it is that failure is not fatal, but failure to change might be. This is the Ozone. I'm your host, Omar Miller, here with my brother Terry Miller. Enjoy this baseball, ladies and gentlemen. Let's play ball! Ozone. I'm living the dream. I'm in love with the lights. This is 